This is April in Red. Welcome to our channel. First, I will be giving you a quick recap on our aircrete journey so far. Then Red will reveal the final results from our last aircrete samples and share our final decisions about whether we are going to use aircrete to build our house. It has been quite the journey so far. In the summer of 2020, we purchased some off-grid land. Our county has an opt-out permit, which allows us to build our own house using whatever materials and methods we choose. We debated for many months about what type of materials we wanted to use to build our house. There are many alternative options, and we considered many of them. We finally settled on rammed earth. We eventually switched to aircrete because it was more insulative and it wouldn't take as long to build. We knew it was going to be a challenge, but we were ready to take it on. First, we ordered the supplies, then made and collected the other necessary equipment to make aircrete. In mid-October, we were finally ready to start making aircrete. We have documented the process and the many batches and different things we have tried. We have videos making the aircrete garden wall and destroying our test samples. We include cost of supplies and recipes in those videos. I will share a link to our aircrete video playlist in the description below. We filled the garden wall, made and tested aircrete for nine weeks, while also working on the design, utilities, and foundation for our house. After testing our first set of samples, we were very impressed with aircrete. It was way stronger and less prone to cracking than we expected. So we purchased the materials to make an inexpensive steel frame to support the house and roof. We continued filling the garden wall and making aircrete test batches. We started having issues with the aircrete not turning out nearly as well as in the beginning. We had multiple batches that outright failed. They sunk and were brittle and crumbly. We doubled down and tried to narrow in on any possible variables. Now Red is going to tell you about the results from our latest testing and our final decision about whether we are going to build our home out of aircrete. After the incredibly disappointing results from this last round of testing, April and I had to step back and really rethink whether aircrete was going to work for us. And, you know, we just got to thinking about kind of this whole experience. You know, we've been making all these samples for a really long time and we haven't been able to achieve consistent results. And we found out some stuff about the aircrete that really worries us. And so kind of based on all this stuff, we've decided not to move forward with aircrete. Uh, we just don't think it's material that we have been able to figure out. We don't feel like we can produce it reliably or get consistent results. And we're really worried about cracking and powdering. To kind of demonstrate some of the issues we've had, it's I want to show you kind of the progression of the samples that we've made and kind of, you know, our conclusions. And so we start over here with some of our first samples. These were kind of test samples. You know, number six was our first successful batch. These were a little aerated and porous, not too bad. Look how nice number six is. It's really tight, small bubbles, fairly consistent. Number seven was a failed batch. Number eight was our strongest batch. That was our, our low foam. And it's super tight, super dense, very consistent. Both of these samples were really excellent. And so then as we go along, you know, we, we tested various things, paper, um, metal. But as you can see, they kind of start getting worse. The paper is really funny. But just as we progressed, even in the original group of samples, it seemed like there, it was getting harder and harder to get that good, consistent, tight bubble pattern. Here's the first section of wall that we did with those early samples. And actually, this section of wall, like the early samples, turned out the best. The further we went, the, it seemed like the worse we got. The later sections of wall that we did turned out to be more porous, just a weaker, lighter mixture. And we, we started really struggling and trying to narrow in and figure out what we were doing wrong, and we just couldn't. Um, we did multiple more test batches, but they did not turn out any better. In fact, it just seemed to keep getting worse. So kind of at the end, we, we really doubled down and just really started trying really hard to isolate our variables, add new things, try new things, and try, you know, really hard to figure this stuff out. And kind of here's the results of that. Um, Fairly consistent bubbles, but very porous. And as you can see, as we move along here, these are kind of in the order in which we did them. They just keep getting worse despite our best efforts. Look at how bad that one is. Lots of big bubbles, very porous, very weak. 
um, and it just gets worse to the to the end. So it's like the more we did, the harder we tried, the worse they got. We we just are unable to make consistently good quality aircrete. We know from our early samples that it can be done, and so you know we've spent a couple months uh, working on this, and we are not able to get good results. And so just not comfortable putting this in the walls and trying to make a house out of this stuff. Not saying somebody can't do it, but um, we haven't. We're not there and we need to proceed with the house. So we're going to go a different route. Besides the inconsistency and difficulty getting a good batch, we also have found that this stuff really cracks. You can just see the micro cracking here just everywhere. There's little fissures, little cracks. Some of them get pretty big. And so we were really worried about the micro cracking and that's one reason we went with the fibers to try to fight the micro cracking. Here's the section of wall that has the uh, fibers, uh, fiber, fiberglass and basalt fibers added and that we hoped would help with the micro cracking. And this w section of wall isn't even very dry compared to the other sections, but you can already see micro cracking all through. And so it, it just seems so common and prevalent. Something else that worried us about aircrete is the fact that when it's put under stress or duress it just turns to a powder. You can just see I'm just kind of rubbing this lightly with the rock and it's just powdering off. And as you as you work it or press on it that's kind of what it does. You can just sit here and with your fingernail just you know go all the way through the wall if you wanted to. And so you know we decided early on we didn't want it bearing weight like load bearing um, and so we designed kind of a, a metal structure for our house to where this wall you know for the aircrete wouldn't have to take direct weight you know pressing down but it did need to be able to support the metal beams so the metal beams were going to be coming up and all, all I needed the aircrete to do was keep the metal beams from twisting or bowing which it should have been able to do pretty well um, unfortunately, I think that with time and vibration of those metal beams moving this and it puts strain on the aircrete, the aircrete would just turn to powder. And I think eventually a gap would form between the metal beam that I need to support and the aircrete and it wouldn't any longer keep the metal beam from twisting or bowing. Now this section of wall was some, one of the earlier uh, sections that we poured and it had some of our best samples in it. As you can see, there is a little micro cracking, but overall it's, it's much better. And if, you know, honestly, if we could have been able to reproduce some, the results that we had from some of those early batches, we would probably still be going with aircrete. But, you know, despite our best efforts, we just weren't able to replicate it even once since those first batches. Here's an example of one of the cold seams um, that we, um, from the original pores. As you can see, it opened up quite a bit, about a quarter inch at the top. Now, of course, this isn't on a, on a footer. It's just poured onto compacted soil, but still, it, it, we saw quite a bit of shrinkage here and a, just a pretty huge crack open up. One other factor in kind of us giving up on aircrete was, you know, it's getting cold and we're really not able, able to make aircrete anymore and keep it from freezing. And so basically we have to wait till spring in order to move forward with any more test sampling and building the house. And really that's just not acceptable right now. We don't have four months to kill while we wait to make more samples and make the decision later. We need to move forward on the house and we need to you know, know what we're gonna be building it out of. And so that was another factor in us moving away from aircrete. We'd like to say about aircrete that we're not saying that it can't be done. It's just that, you know, after two months of seriously trying, putting in some serious effort, trying lots of different things, trying to control parameters, doing our level best, we have not been successful. And so we've just come to a place where we've got to cut our losses and move on to plan B, which we're actually really excited about. So plan B for us is to use conventional materials in an unconventional way. We're still going to build the same house. We're going to use the same house design and we still need the same things. It needs to be really well insulated. It needs to be resistant to wildfire or flame and it needs to be low, super low maintenance. It'll have the same passive solar design to make full use of the power of the sun in the winter time and to be protect us from the heat of the sun in the summertime. We had bought a whole bunch of metal sea purlins to construct the metal frame of the aircrete house with. And so we're going to actually repurpose those metal sea purlins and still use most of them in the roof structure. So uh, that's kind of the unconventional, conventional materials in unconventional ways. So these metal sea purlins usually are not used to make roof trusses, but I think they would work perfect. And I'm going to be putting two of them back to back to make kind of like an I-beam 
and I'm going to make my own metal roof trusses and use most of those, most of the metal that we bought for the aircrete house in this new conventional house. So it'll basically have a, a roof with a metal frame. The outside we plan to sheet with basically metal siding to get the fireproof and low maintenance. And then we have some ideas on kind of the best, least expensive way to get really good insulation in the walls and ceiling. We're kind of working through the challenges now of changing from an aircrete house to a more conventional build. And so one of those challenges is we'd already bought materials for the aircrete house. And some of that was we'd bought two pallets of cement, Portland cement. And so trying to figure out what to do with that. And so we've decided that instead of the aircrete pad that we had originally intended for our floor, we're going to go with a half poured concrete slab, basically in the kitchen and the bathrooms and, and in the dining area. And then the rest of the house, the bedrooms and the living area will be a, an earthen floor. So for those poured pads, we're going to hand mix and pour those pads ourselves uh, using that cement that we already have on site and sand and gravel that we have. And of course, we've been crunching the numbers on the differences between aircrete and the new conventional build. And so in an upcoming video, I'll be going through the price differences and seeing how, you know, an unconventional aircrete, aircrete house build compares to the more conventional uh, build that we're planning on doing now. One nice thing about changing plans to a more conventional build is that we'll, able, we'll be able to keep working on it full steam through the winter. In the upcoming videos, you'll see kind of how we have to work through the issues created by changing plans kind of in the middle here. But I think we can get through it and it ought to be a lot of fun actually. We're looking forward to the new build.